topping out if you've never topped out before is difficult and terrifying because there's like a whole other element like it adds another dimension or instead of just you're just climbing then all of a sudden you're like hanging over the lip you can't see your feet you're like searching around for like what to grab and you're like and then you do the same thing with your feet like your feet are kind of doing this and then you're like it's getting super extended and then everything sort of becomes obsolete and then you just beach whale and then you kind of like slide off. <laughs> at, Hopefully not. Really, really scary. And so off like often I'll go up the backside. One, you figure out how to go down because you go you find the path of least resistance that you go up. I'll go up the backside and come down and like find and chalk a bunch of holes on the top out. Like especially if I know the top out's gonna be hard. Find all the holds, chop them, tick them, like make it as safe as possible. And then when you're up there, then you know, like, okay, I'm grabbing this and I'm grabbing this, I'm grabbing this, and you know exactly where they are. And a, a big mistake is people tend to get too spread out. Like their feet stay really low and then they're just like reaching as far back as they can because they think that that's what's going to happen. Like the farther back you go, the better. But the farther back you go, right? the farther down your feet stay, you lose all that space between your body and the rock and it makes it impossible to bring your feet up. Uh, kind of want to stay like in a little bit of a small box and then keep bringing your feet up higher before you're like going back and back and back <clears throat> topping out is scary still absolutely is still scary sometimes all right y'all just a quick 30 seconds here to tell you about today's sponsor which is frictitious climbing y'all check out this thing that they invented here this is so rad it's a doorway mount for your hangboard, no screwing, no drilling, no punching holes in your walls. If you travel a lot, this thing's amazing. You can put any hangboard you own onto this thing, or you can score one of their rad hangboards for 20% off, hitting that link below. It can come pre-mounted like mine did. So I popped it out of the box, I mounted it on the doorway, no mess, no fuss, and boom, you're hanging your tendons in minutes. I love this thing. What, what are the biggest mistakes that gym climbers make when they go outdoors? I don't know. I think maybe just like underestimating it. It's involved. There's usually like driving, navigating, parking, parking in the right spot, um, finding the trailhead, like hiking. It's just like so much more involved, like hiking, being on the right trail, hiking in the right direction, staying on the trail. Um, a lot of it is like some areas have limited access or restricted access or like fragile access issues sometimes due to like overuse or like the disrespect of areas um being really aware of like that area's sort of like guidelines um in terms of like closures and ethics or like the rain like waiting out the rain like if you're going to red rocks like usually each area has um like a non-profit or an organization that has an instagram so it's like the southern utah climbers alliance um the it was the lvclc now it's Southern Nevada Climbers Alliance, formerly Las Vegas, whatever, I don't, the LVCLC, whatever that stood for. Um, but so right. they all also have like Instagram accounts, like the Southeast Climbers Alliance. Like there's all, all the information you need is like usually on that local area's Instagram account, whether it's like, has yeah. it rained? When did it rain? How much did it rain? What are the local access issues? Like what boulders are closed due to um, like rock art or birds? There's like, and just like being really respectful of that, even if it like bums your trip out, like you could get it closed for someone else, you know, and it, that's super not cool. And I think you you sending your project on this trip is like not really worth an entire zone getting closed. So being like really aware and respectful of that um, in terms of like following along with like the local area's guidelines and also just like being respectful of other people outside, like there's like proper etiquette and respect outside that's like definitely different from the gym where there seems to like sometimes not be any um be really aware right. of like walking up on a group and respectfully ask if you can climb with them don't assume i've never really had anyone say no and i don't i've never said no so it's like obvious like obviously you're gonna climb on the we're gonna climb on the boulder together but don't just like throw your shit down and then like start trying it like let's have a little conversation you know like maybe the pads are exactly placed how someone wants them and they had just brushed all the holds and they're like ready for their like send burn and whether that's a warm-up for you and their project like you still have to respect their process just like you would want someone to respect yours so always ask like hey do you mind if we like climb on this with you like do you need more foam like and don't 
I got a whole list of things here. <laughs> um, don't walk on someone else's pads with your dirty approach shoes. Whether or not you're cl like, try to go around them because you get dirt on the pads and then you get dirt on your climbing shoes. And when dirt from your climbing shoes transfers onto the rock, the it grinds the holds down. And so it makes mm. the texture worse. It makes the holds worse over time. So like, don't step on someone else's pads with your dirty shoes. Clean off your climbing shoes before getting on because same reason, like dirt on the rubber grinds away at the texture and the rock. Um, don't walk. If you can help it, don't walk in the dirt in your climbing shoes. And if you do, like clean them off before. Um, don't touch the holds if someone has just brushed them without putting chalk on. And if someone's just brushed them, just don't touch them. Or if you like, want, late. would you mind if I like seal the grips, like feel the grips a little bit, like chalk up first because the oils and the grease that are on your hands can transfer onto the rock. And if it's some, like someone's climbing at their limit, like that makes a difference. And it's like that you, someone has a sweaty hand and they touch something and it leaves those little sweaty fingerprints. Like that's really disrespectful. <laughs> so like chalk up before <laughs> touching the holds, especially if someone else is on it, brush them after every attempt, like try not to erase or move someone's tick marks. Just like there's just respect. So brushing holds, chalking up before touching them, not walking on someone else's pads, and just like communicating at like asking, hey, is it okay if I even if it's like if do you is it okay if I play music? And if someone's like, nah man, I'm kinda like like vibing with like the silence, like be okay with them saying no too. It's like you kinda have to compromise and be willing to compromise if it's something you want to climb on, it's like if someone else is like, hey, do you mind if I play music? And you're like, yeah, no, totally, that's chill. Like, just keep it maybe not, doesn't need to be bumping. Um, same with, like, smoking. Like, sometimes people are like, do you mind if I smoke? And it's like, oh, I, can't, I don't love that. So maybe, like, take it. Can you take it over there? It's just right. communicate about everything, you know? Yeah, be cool. Yeah, I mean, like, it, cool. there, there's such a community around climbing. And I think... Um, you made a really great point, which is like, these are things that don't exist at gyms. They don't teach this. Uh, it's not something that comes up. The gym's usually playing its own music and there's no right. smoking in a gym and these kinds of things. And like, you don't have your approach shoes on. Right. It's just people walking around in their stinky bare feet. Don't, and so, don't you climb know, bare feet either. And don't yeah. climb approach shoes for the same reason. The dirt on the approach shoes grinds away at the texture of the holds. And also it's douchey. You look like a douchebag. And it's right. You like some, someone is like projecting this, and you're gonna get on it in your approach shoes to show them that you can do it in your approach shoes. Nobody cares. Yeah. <laughs>